I am finally back, and today we are starting a brand new world on low difficulty. I think I will be Pete again. He's just got this. Oh, I need a world name. We will just call this slow play for now, I guess. Uh, but Pete's just got this socially awkward nerdiness about him that I feel I can kind of relate to a little. That <laughs> little. See what I did there? Because he's little. Ah, you get it. <clears throat> If you're a subscriber or returning viewer, I just want to say thanks for sticking around during this gap in my videos. I took a few months away from this, uh, well, honestly, from pretty much everything, because we had a baby. A beautiful baby boy. It's a very exciting time. But if you are new here, you should definitely stick around and go check out my other videos after this one. I think you'll enjoy them, and you'll get to see what you're getting into. So this playthrough, I'm calling this playthrough slow play, because I want to play slow. Uh, pretty much just don't want to rush to the end. I'm wanting to play the way I feel the game is intended. I'm going to build up my character, making sure that I'm well enough equipped before moving into a new section, because my end goal here is to complete the game 100% without dying. I know it's not going to be easy to do, and it may not even happen, because accidents do happen, and slip-ups, even though I'm, <laughs> I'm mostly perfect. Uh, but that's why I wanted to take my time to move forward with this story. And along the way, I want to talk about gameplay and combat tips, as well as some building tips I've learned while playing. And maybe even throw in a little life talk here and there. I do give great relationship advice. Peep your creatures. You only need to peep each one once to unlock the creature card. The cards do give you the weaknesses of each bug, but the main reason you want to peep them is so you can start earning gold cards. There is a mutation that is unlocked by earning those gold cards that increases the damage of your critical hits. So after you have a creature peeped, you have a chance of obtaining the gold card for that creature when looting the body. You are also able to peep them after you kill them, as long as you do it before you dissect them for parts. Make sure you are gathering an abundant amount of resources. You can never have too much of anything. In early game, you will run through grass, uh, plant fibers, excuse me, rocks, sap, clovers, and so on. All the common and easy to find resources are common and easy to find for a reason. I'm going to be using the majority of the first day just gathering stuff and filling up my inventory with whatever I can grab. I do actually want to go ahead and grab two aphids so I can make the aphid slippers. And when they're up on the grass like this, just give it a little slap and they'll come falling down. Sometimes they'll die from fall damage. This guy did not though. I'll peep you. Oh right, I already did the ant. Uh, but the slippers are going to give us a bit of a speed boost. It'll just help us move around uh, while exploring. Now we're heading to the field station. I've only been gathering what's around here and it's a bit, uh, nowhere near enough though. And throughout the backyard, you're gonna find these collectibles like this folder. Uh, there are also tapes and various other things, but they usually just give you like a little extra to the story or some hints, but some are more relevant such as keys or boss notes. Now hopping over to the resource analyzer, make sure you are analyzing everything. We're gonna start with the grass so we can unlock the crude rope. We also wanna do sap so we can make a torch and rocks. The rocks will unlock our first tools, uh, which we will go ahead and craft now. We need crew rope first. The rope can also be analyzed, just crafting five. Actually, let's go ahead and do 10. Uh, then we'll, oop, wrong button. We'll make a spear and an ax, and we're gonna use the ax right away to gather some dried grass so we can craft the torch. Only two from that one. We're gonna need much more soon anyway. And before I forget, we can craft the torch now. Here's my second aphid. Hopefully it falls down. Nope, I guess it'll just stay up there and not be my second aphid. Unfortunately, that does happen sometimes. Huh? Um, I guess it will be my second aphid. It kind of shot out of there. I guess it clipped when it jumped. Suicide's not a joke, Jim. Wait, that's, that's not right. Uh, identity theft. Wow, what's wrong with me? Clovers are going to be another resource you'll use up real quick. They'll give you a bed. You use them for storage and armor set with an ability we will be taking advantage of soon. Uh, and eventually for roofs. Probably more than I'm not thinking of. The point is you'll need a lot. This is very important. Uh, do not drink the nasty water. It will poison you and drain your hunger. And you will die. Very slowly. <laughs> like for real, very slowly. It takes like two minutes to die once you're starving or dehydrated. But even if you eat while you are poisoned, it'll just keep draining your hunger bar until the status effect has worn off. And right now all we have for food are mushrooms. Which are a great starting food because you can find a lot of them, but they can't compete against the nasty water. Uh, you'll just run right through them. I am struggling so hard right now. 
In the beginning, the game does give you markers for clean water and easy food, like the mushrooms. You can see the water there. The best way I find to get it is to follow the grass blade it's on and give it a whack. You do sometimes have to chase it, but if the dewdrop lands in water on the ground, it pops and you can't have it. You could also throw something or shoot an arrow at the dew to get it to fall. Getting on with a story, you want to hop up on this machine and slap this target button. You've got three lasers that come on, one is malfunctioning and one is blocked by a blade of grass. The grass is easy to take care of, it only takes 46 hits. No, I'm just kidding, it only takes eight. Uh, I missed one, six, seven, eight. And we want these grass blanks. Before we can do anything with them, we need to analyze them, but we have to be carrying them to do that. Before we fix the other laser, I am going to head back to the field station to analyze these planks. And we want to do that now because this will unlock the workbench for us so we can craft armor and soon better weapons and tools. And since I have another charge, I want to analyze the rope so I can make an eye patch. The eye patch will give us a damage boost. Uh, not much, but could give us an edge and a pinch. Let's go ahead and drop the workbench back here. Holding for super build is the way to go if it requires like four or more items. Now we need bandages. I want to go ahead and make three. The eye patch requires two of them. I want an extra in case I take too much damage. Remember, I am playing to stay alive. Oh right, I need to be at the workbench. The very reason it was made. Eye patch check. I do also want to get clover armor. It'll be our best protection right now, but more importantly, it'll help maintain our hunger and thirst bars. They drain slower with the clover armor equipped, and that's a pretty big deal on Woe, uh, because they do drain pretty quickly normally. There may be another charge. Yes, so we'll just go ahead and do the fiber bandage. And now we're going to get into our first fight. Our first hostile creature encounter, it's going to be the Lawn Mites. They are weak against the pointy damage, so spears and arrows are best, but no arrows yet. So just the spear will be fine. And always remember, peeping before touching is the best practice when encountering something new. And I know in a different situation that could be horrible advice. Come back, I want you... I want to kill all that is over here because the Mite Fuzz is going to get used up pretty quick. Also, some more food isn't a bad idea. The Mites on the wire are one shot. You can actually just punch them. I want to do this without the rock. And that's the spear again. There we go. And a one, a year den. There's really no use in switching from the weapon. The five or six on the wire don't really impact your durability enough to make it worth anything. The Mites attack pattern is really simple to follow. They only have one attack and it's this little leap. I say little, but they can actually lunge at a pretty far distance. Uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. One more. That makes number three. And here's where the torch will come into play. It is, well, <laughs> and out of the darkness, they shall rise. That genuinely scared me. Like I actually just jumped. Without the armor, that would have done significant damage. I think they can three-shot you without protection on a row. Maybe four. Either way, if you get into a fight with multiple mites, they can take you down. And you don't want that to happen because that's just embarrassing. No, I'm kidding. You don't always see them coming if you're not expecting them. Like, uh, if they come at you from the dark, for example. Alright, so that activates the third laser. We're not going to go through the rest of this cave yet. Once we activate the machine, raw science appears all around the backyard, including at the end of this cave. So instead of going all the way down there twice, we'll just knock it all out at one time. Um, I actually want to kill the rest of these mites around here so we can have some more fuzz. And let's get more sap. On our way back to the Mr. Machine, we are going to stop at the field station to analyze more stuff. We should have a couple of charges ready for us. The quicker we get stuff analyzed, the quicker we build up raw science. I'll talk more about the science once we get to Burgle. But we just scanned the aphids to unlock the aphid slippers and we want to do the sprig so we can make a roasting spit. So let's get out here and make these slippers, get ourselves a little speed boost. Get those equipped. Oh, these granola bars, I recommend saving them. They do a bit for hunger and also great for healing, plus they stack. So I like to save them for boss battles or long journeys, so I don't have to stop for food along the way. Right now though, I am in need of some water, so I will look to the skies and pray. Hello, aphid. Hi. I missed. Throwing weapons, or hucking, as they call it, does do more damage, but it also uses more durability. The trade-off is not equal, so it's really best to only do this if you really need the advantage, or if you can't reach. Okay, there's also a chance of losing your weapon if you miss like I am doing, but we are going to try again. 
Silence, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. First try. Am I right? The gnats are so bouncy. Got him. Okay, Spear. Not cool. I actually want more gnat fuzz. Nice. So much bounce. I still need water. As you get into night, you'll come across dewdrops far more frequently, but I don't have that much time left. Before night falls, I will die from uh, water hunger. Let's go ahead and hit this button right here. This will activate the machine, in case you didn't know what the activate button would do. For some reason, this cutscene has not been made skippable. It's one of the original scenes from the game preview, so I guess they just never came back and made it possible to skip, which is kind of annoying for anybody who has seen it multiple times and wishes to skip it. It's like you're being forced to watch it. You don't have to watch it here, of course. I'll definitely skip it for you. I'm not gonna make you sit through it. That's just stupid. Oh. Found some water. Back at the field station to analyze more things, or one thing, it's going to be the cleverly. This will give us a storage basket and lean to. We'll be able to set our respawn point and sleep the night away. And I like to set these up at every field station. The idea is that you can look at the map and be like, oh, there's a field station there. So I know there will be a bed and a crafting bench and everything I desire. We also want a roasting spit. Boom. Let's make our bed and a storage basket because my inventory is getting out of hand. Oh, I need more rope. Before we head back to the mic cave, we want a hammer. Boom, hammer. Anything else? No, we're good. So I do have some gnat meat I could put on the roasting spit, but I want to analyze it first. Uh, let's go ahead and set our respawn point. Food on the spit does go bad now, but the spoil meter does reset on raw meat when you put it on the spit. So if you don't need the food right away, your best bet is to just hold on to the raw meat until it's about to expire, then toss it over the fire. Before this day ends, we're going to run around and get some easy raw science. There's some down in the puddle. Bloop. It's between the machine and the field station. And just past the field station this way, you can see it just up ahead there, will be another easy 100 raw science. Uh, back in the tunnel, I am going to grab all of these slime molds. They make an easy torch. They do run out quickly, but they can also be used underwater. And when you're breaking stuff or cutting stuff down that's close together like this, aim for the middle between them and you'll save yourself some time. I did not do a great job of demonstrating that here, but you can hit them both or more if there's more at the same time. I will try it again down here. I did not have a great start. The top one will break first, but it should only be a hit or two to break the bottom one after the top one goes. One, and there it goes. I want all of these rocks. Unfortunately, we can't get the marble or quartzite down here until we get a higher tier hammer, but we can get our first scabby scheme and more raw science. 500 of them raw sciences. One more thing before we have our first sleep, we want to grab a dandelion tuft and we want to analyze the weed stem, so two more things. The dandelions are the only weeds you can cut down with a tier one ax, so if you want to build with the weed stems this early, be prepared for a rough grind. I have done it before and it sucks and I'll probably do it again because I think weed stems look better than grass planks. Aha, there they are. I thought I lost them. We got three from that one, so we'll have backup. With our last charge, we'll do dried grass so we can make a pallet to store these weed stems on so they don't despawn. We don't want to waste anything. I'm just going to place this by the rock for now. The ants have left food for me. I am so grateful. I will return the favor with death eventually. There you are. I had to find this last sweet stem that I dropped. We waste nothing. I think I already said that. Do I have another charge? No, but I think I'll wait on this last one before I sleep. Then we'll wake up with the full charges and that'll take care of the rest. Also, don't eat or drink right before you sleep. It does drop us to a set level, so it's a waste to do so. Uh, just save it for the morning or uh, whenever you wake up. I am going to use this charge on the weevil meat so I can go ahead and cook it before we sleep because I think it will spoil overnight. So going to sleep now will put us in the dark when we wake up, but that'll be okay. When we wake up, we'll analyze some stuff. We also have the gnat meat to cook. I forgot to cook the weevil meat and it spoiled. Bummer. That's cool though. We're still okay with food and water will be easy to get while the sun is still down. So let's knock these out and head towards the oak tree. I almost forgot about the dandelion tuft. They only work if they're equipped. But while you're in the air, hit the jump button and it'll activate and you'll float down. It'll save you from very dangerous falls, but they do have durability, so pay attention to that. You don't want to be caught in the air with a broken dandelion tuft. 
So while exploring the backyard, you're going to discover landmarks. You want to make sure you're discovering landmarks because they unlock the mutation Natural Explorer. It'll give you a pretty significant speed boost. However, sometimes you won't discover it just by running past it. So if you believe it's a landmark and it's not discovering for you, step back and stare at it. It's a bit annoying, but I have ran past many without them being discovered. And while we're over here, we'll grab some juice. Juice is fun because it fills a decent amount of thirst and a little bit of hunger. Ooh, this old people just saw me, so we're just going to peep it and run away. Hopefully she won't follow. It is possible to fight them this early, but I don't want to risk death. I think she already forgot about us anyway. She did seem kind of stuck. Break their line of sight long enough and you too can avoid a fight. Going to this field station can be risky because the orb weavers do come up this far, but we want to discover it. You have to click on the analyzer to discover them, by the way. Acorns! We want a lot of acorns. Shells, tops, bits, all of it. The bits pile up quickly. You can eat them if you want, but I like to save them for smoothies, so I start saving now because smoothies are my favorite way to heal. We're going to analyze the tops and shells right now because we're going to make a chest in a little bit so we have more inventory to carry back home. Completely forgot about a shovel. Now that we have acorn shells, we can make one. I need to make rope first. And now that we have a shovel, we can look for grubs. Just look at the ground for the dirt moving in a line and strike there with a shovel. But be careful because you could dig up a larva. You can avoid them by listening. The soft sound of dirt moving is a grub. And if it's more harsh, like tumbling rocks, it's a larva. This here is a grub. Let's get our shovel back out. Give it a poke. Don't forget to peep them. You can kill them with a shovel, but it's slow. Switching to a weapon is better. You can upgrade the shovel later, though, if you just want to do that. You will also find acorn parts just chilling on the ground next to the tree. Always pick them up, even the bits, because they can spawn back in as a shell or top, which means more parts for you. Up on this light next to the tree, you'll find more raw science uh, somewhere. Oh, it's on the other corner. Got it. There's also a scabby up top, which we will come back and get another time. Probably when we get the oak tree beacon quest, and that's why we use dandelion tufts. We're going to head into the oak tree lab because my inventory has gotten full and I want to analyze some things, make a chest and clean up. We will also be able to make a water canteen after I analyze the grub parts and that'll help us maintain our thirst a little better. A great thing about labs is that they always have stuff and I shall take it on. You're going to pick up Burgle the same way you pick up a teammate. And while he's doing his dialogue, I'm going to run over here, grab this raw science, and then I'm going to head back out and make the chest to clean up because I forgot to do that. Aphid honeydew is another one of those items that's good for smoothies. You can also eat it. It does a little thirst and a little hunger. I also need clovers for the chest. Never put meat or raw food in a chest that is out in the open because ants will come get it. They will also take other stuff out while they're digging through it. Same goes for mushrooms because of weevils. Burgle does have some pretty funny and useful commentary, so I think it's worth a listen, but I'm going to skip through it. Alright, so right behind Burgle, you'll find some raw science down there. You'll also find some quartzite and maybe marble? I'm not sure about marble. But back up here, there is a tape somewhere. There it is. More raw science down here. Boink. So yes to marble, also quartzite. So right up here, we're going to see our first milk molder. We can't get them yet, though. Uh, I can't get over it either. Actually, right down here you'll be able to see a couple soldier ants, so we're going to peep one while we have the advantage. I, uh, I hope they can't jump up here. There we go. So I got four quartzite and a marble shard from down there. I do feel like I missed one or two, but there's more stuff over here for us to grab. Ooh, this takes entirely way too long. But this will unlock the ASL stations. You can find these at every field station. We are going to start with quest. These will help us earn raw science, kill six eight fits no problem. Craft clover shin guards. Even though I just did that, I'll do it again. The extra one will just be saved for smoothies because you can use anything in smoothies. Then the grave robbery chip. That's the chip in the red anthill. Probably the easiest chip to get on the game. So we'll definitely do that soon. <laughs> I forgot about the science shop. We'll go ahead and unlock the smithing station. I don't think I'll need it yet, but it's only 100. Cookery, yes. And multi-story buildings, I do want. I will be building a base soon, and I need depth. Only 840 left. Can't get anything else, but that's fine for now. I also forgot about this other door. There's another tooth in here uh, we can't get yet. Some raw science, and I don't remember what else. A pebblet, very important. 
Another Feblet. The tooth is... Oh, a tape. There's a tape in here. The tooth is right here. It's a gold one. These build stats across the world. The whites just do your profile or whatever. There is a tooth under this can. It won't be long before we can get those. A great way to travel is to carry a chest around with you. It increases your inventory space. You can't fight with it though. You do have to set it down. And be careful where you set it down because you don't want it getting destroyed. That would be bad. You also can't glide with it. It'll just drop where you last set it down, which can be hard to find at times. Soda drops are a little better than aphid honeydew. They do slightly more thirst and hunger. Before we head back, I want to grab flower petals, mainly just for analyzing right now. There are also orb weavers by this wall, but also thorns so I can make a spiky sprig. They're called thistle needles, not thorns. On the way back, I want to kill four weevils. The weevil shield requires four raw weevil meat to craft, and that's one. It's kind of intense, honestly. I feel like it should be cut in half. Uh, it is not safe here. There is a wolf spider over there, and it's coming right at me. It has walked away, so I believe we are good to go back. I'm going to drop this chest back here, and I'm going to make more to... What? Are you serious? You're too far away. Has your spatial awareness been enhanced? Go away. Come to me, Weevil Shield. Shields are a weak hand item. They provide better protection for you and your armor if you happen to miss the perfect block. Or if you just want to hold block, that's cool. I also want to make acorn armor. It provides better protection, but with the full set equipped, it makes you a target. Anytime there's danger, enemies will have their eyes on you. Aphids just die to be around me. <laughs> oh, hey, what are you doing? Well, I guess we are fighting ants now. I want to equip the shield. Ants are weak to pointy damage, especially to their eyes, so aim for the face. And they run when their health gets low. It's very annoying. I will try to throw the spear when I... Uh, I was not expecting you to stop right there. And now we have no stamina. Come back! I really hope I don't lose sight of you. Okay, we're good. Uh, looks like he did get one. I thought we stopped him and- Ah! What the heck, man? I guess you too shall die. By the way, make sure you're working on those perfect blocks to unlock the Perry Master mutation. It gives you stamina back on perfect blocks. Are you kidding me? I ran out of stamina right before the throw. So, he got away. I think he ran into the haze. I didn't actually see it happen, but that was the direction he was running when I lost sight. But we did get an ant head from the first ant, so that's cool. Analyze the parts as well. It's a new day, which means a new tool. Not really, but I do need to make more rope so I can craft a spiky sprig. The spiky sprig is really just going to be a stepping stone to the ant club. Even though the soldier ants are also weak to pointy damage, it is called stabbing damage, by the way. I just like to call it pointy damage. But I like to take the soldier ants out with the sprig because it stuns them and makes it easier to take them down with taking less damage. Ah, I completely forgot about this tape. I was so distracted by explaining everything, I guess. I came back to get the food I left, and I'm glad I did because these two goobers are trying to have a feast on my hard work. I do also like to use the club on these guys because I miss. I missed twice, actually. But they stun in two hits, and with a club, it's a three-hit kill, and it's perfect. With a sprig, it's not as effective because they can run when they wake back up. Stop running! You can't run from the Lord! I will stab you in the butt. Whoa, if I would have gotten here a moment earlier, I would have been face to face with her. And that could have been bad. So we are at the old ant hill to take down the three soldier ants that are in there. It's right by the oak tree, highlighted on the map. I already discovered it when I walked by earlier. But we are just going to move right in. I'm going to kill every ant in here. I want to have a full set of red ant armor before we go to the red ant hill. Well, this just happens to be the only worker ant in here. Going for a cheesy start on the soldier ant with a spear throw. Got some quick damage. Oh no, wrong weapon. Ooh, I forgot where I put the sprig. So the soldier ants have two attack patterns. The one there is the beginning of a three strike attack where each hit does a little more damage. You see I stunned him after five or six hits, but I didn't manage my stamina very well. But I may be able to finish him. Yeah, I was able to take him down before he was able to attack again. But the soldier ants have another attack that's a single strike and does significantly more damage. It's a charge attack, and he was about to do it right before he died. They raise their head up high and spread their mandibles far apart, then lunge. And they can lunge a far distance, so running isn't the best option. 
Sorry for the darkness here, by the way. I'm just taking down the last soldier ant. That's another charge attack. I got hit by one of those on the second ant, and that's the only hit I took. You can see it took half my health, and that's with the acorn armor. That's better. Now we can see. So we just got a new scabby scheme, and throughout the tunnel... Uh, I thought that was a level one. But throughout the tunnel, there's actually a bit of brittle marble and quartzite. <laughs> We forgot the scabby over here on the Tropicop Puncho box. We're just gonna parkour our way up here. I'm sure there are other ways. This is just the way I discovered and how I always do it. It's pretty easy. You don't need to be a master. But here's the scabby scheme and there's also some raw science on the straw. So during all of this adventure, I haven't found any red ants, but we've got the mandibles to analyze and the acid glands. I forgot about those. Let's go ahead and craft the clover shin guards. Why? Oh, I went back up. That's easy raw science. And we want the red ant club. This will be a big boost in power for us. It'll make larva pretty easy to manage, which we will be hunting soon. Oh, uh, where is it? I always struggle with locating what's in my inventory. Now we can experience the ease of taking on a red ant with a red ant club. One, two, three. It's that easy. It's kind of cruel killing them with a weapon that has been fashioned out of pieces of their fallen comrades. I mean, imagine being beaten to death by someone's teeth on a stick. Ah, well, that's embarrassing. Oh, another. You shall die first. So while there is still day, I actually want to move to this area here because over there is a larva cave. There are two entrances to it. One is blocked by a boulder, but that doesn't matter. We're not necessarily interested in exploring the cave today, just killing some of the larva that are hanging out around there. And I believe the field station that is popping up on the radar is one that is located within the cave, so we should start seeing them soon. We've got my time. I found the entrance. I haven't seen any larva on the surface yet, so that probably means there'll be somewhere between, yeah, I don't know, four and 118 larva underground. Probably like 15 or so. Oh, hello, friend. I wasn't expecting to see you so soon. I want to draw him out a little to fight peacefully. <laughs> uh, so their attacks are similar to red. Oh, no. There's another. Ah! 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 I missed every block. They get deadly impacts, but their attacks are like soldier ants. They have a charge attack and a three strike attack. I am being a bit bold and trying to get just one out. I'm also curious about how many are down here. It's... Oh, yeah, look at them huddling, all in a pile. Oh, no. Oh, it's just one. Oh, never mind. More are getting up. Let's get away. It looks like only one came out. I hear an ant. Are you going to help or watch? You want to help? Oh, did I hit you? I did hit it. I still need more anyway. We have more than enough larva spikes for now, so we can craft a larva blade. The reason we want the larva blade is for the hedge lab because the spiders are weak to slashing damage. And I think we have enough ant parts for the entire ant armor set. Oh, I skipped the chest piece. Okay, so we just need rope to finish the legs. Check it out. This is why we want the red ant armor. The full armor set makes them see you as one of their own, so they don't attack you. It makes running through the red ant hill easy and therefore making this ship the easiest to obtain in the game. But they will attack you if you attack them first or if you take one of their eggs, which I do plan on doing on the way back out just to analyze it, then I will destroy it. There's also a fair amount of quartzite and marble in here. Also a full set of rotten bee armor, some raw science and you know, whatever else, a scabby, I think. Wow, there are a lot of eggs right here. Then right over here is our first chip. After we return it to Burgle, there will be more purchasables in the shop. I've gotten all that I can from in here. There are still some upgrade materials I can't get yet, but we are ready to head out, so I am just gonna grab this egg and dip, because once I pick it up, they'll be aggro. Hey, don't kick it. Yoink, run! Oh, there are so many. It looks like we only have one still following us. I'm just going to take it out uh, with a club, actually. I'll let you go first. Mm, that one will probably come at us too. Yeah, that's fine. We want to analyze this egg quickly. I'll also go ahead and do two of the bee armor pieces while I'm here. Now we will destroy the egg. Just highlight it, click actions, and go down to trash one or trash stack, either will work. 
But we want to do this so the egg isn't on us or around our stuff when it hatches because it will go through our things and throw stuff on the ground and those items will despawn if we don't see it happen and pick them up in time. But we got 21 quartzite and 24 marble from in there. It's not too bad. I think there's only one of each down there that I couldn't break. The canteen upgrade is a must. It'll allow us to carry four drops of water or juice or soda. I also want to grab fortified bases because we are going to get to building a base soon and I want it to be a little protected. The raids in the beginning aren't really anything to worry about, but I honestly just don't really care for the look of grass plank walls. So it's personal preference there. There's some raw science down there, but one more thing I want to do is harvest these web sacks. They provide easy bug parts. You can get a stink bug, bombardier parts, uh, even ladybug parts. I also want the web fibers. You need to be careful when breaking the web sacks because spiderlings do pop out of them. Also over here, there is a orb weaver that will come this way and a wolf spider right next to us that has been alerted of our presence. So let's break this and hop back up on the tree route to avoid a fight with either of the big guys. So they cleared out and it looks like the spiderlings did too, which is unfortunate because I don't like leaving them running around because they'll just pop out of nowhere and bite your kneecaps right off. Uh, I got nap fuzz from the first one and it looks like the second one is a bust. We're going to use the larva blade on the spiderlings. They move quick and it's got a quick attack, so it helps. Uh, and we've got a classic three on one situation. Ah, we've just unlocked our first mutation. Parry Master returns stamina on perfect blocks. So let's get this equipped. I mean, it's better than nothing. It does actually really help against creatures that attack more frequently. In the end, it like allows you to go longer before being exhausted. I almost forgot to peep one of them. Oopsie. So I just checked the time and we're not even two hours into playing this world yet. I feel like we got a lot done and that's even with moving through the story slowly. Like we're pretty well geared up. I feel like it's the first time for me being this ready for the hedge lab that I kind of feel like it'll be the easiest run that I've ever done. And I'm gonna be even more prepared by the time we go. I should be able to make a spinning wheel now. Ah, I need clay. I forgot about the clay. I will run and get some next time. I also want to go ahead and craft the anvil. I wasn't going to upgrade any of the lower level weapons, but I think it'll be better for, you know, staying alive. Uh, so I'll do the larva blade and maybe the ant club because those will be like my main weapons through the hedge. So I feel like there is a lot of information to take in, especially for any new players. But whether you learned anything new or not, I really appreciate you checking it out and sticking around to the end. Uh, next time I will be building and knocking out the hedge lab and you, anything else that I feel like doing. So I'll see you.